Hello all welcome to broadcasting and streaming techniques This is Dr. Saki Muthu We are discussing about terrestrial transmission of digital television signal DVB-T in that we are going to see about interference on the DVB-T transmission link and its effects Did you see the diagrams what I have given here it's in, in our now young age I have seen this Yagi wood antenna this is called Yagi wood antenna corrected this you can also construct this yagi wood antenna you can try so when you are you, with this one simple antenna you take a wire you can connect it to your tv uh, or a cable so you can view doordarshan easy to construct try that let's see the interference now let's discuss about interference on the dvbt transmission link and its effects so look at the diagram no 15 look at the diagram 15 the diagram 15 the terrestrial transmission paths <coughs> look at that no <coughs> terrestrial transmission paths are subject to numerous influences apart from additive white gaussian noise these are mainly the the many echoes that is the multi path reception multi path reception which makes this type of transmission so very problematic terrestrial reception is easy or difficult depending on the echo situation look at the you know, quality the quality of the transmission link the quality of the transmission link is 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 determined by the Uh, dvbt modulator and transmitter the high crest factor of cofdm transmissions the high crest factor of cofdm transmissions results in special requirements even at the transmitting end in theory the crest factor that is the ratio between the maximum peak amplitude and the rms value of the dvbt signal the ratio between maximum peak amplitude and the rms value of dvbt signal is of the order of magnitude of 35 to 41 db but it would not be possible to operate any practical power amplifier with these crest factors sooner or later there would be there would uh, they would lead to its destruction in practice therefore the crest factor is limited to about uh, 12 to 13 db before the dvbt signal is fed into the power amplifier however this leads to a poor shoulder attenuation at the dvbt signal and in addition in band noise of the same order of magnitude as the shoulder shoulder atten attenuation is 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 produced due to the intermodulation and cross modulation the shoulder attenuation is then about uh, 38 to 40 db <coughs> to bring this shoulder attenuation back to a reasonable order of magnitude passive band fast filter tuned to the dvbt channel are connected downstream look at figure number 16 this again provides a shoulder attenuation of better than 50 db that is called critical mask but there is nothing can be done against the in band carrier to noise ratio of about 38 to 40 db now let's is present these interference products are the results of the clipping required for reducing the crest factor these interference products will now determine the performance of the, of the dvbt transmitter that is every dvbt transmitter will exhibit a uh, channel to noise ratio of the order of uh, about 38 to 40 db today direct modulation is used in virtually every dvbt modulator that is the signal is converted directly from the digital baseband into rf as a result of which analog iq modulators are used in consequence this circuit section 
2 which is now no longer operating and with the theoretical perfection this has adverse effects on the signal quantity and signal quality resulting in IQ errors uh, means uh, amplitude imbalance resulting in IQ errors such as amplitude imbalance um, IQ phase errors and uh, lack of carrier suppression this is an art of makers of modulators to keep these influences to a minimum however the presence of analog IQ modulator the presence of analog IQ modulator in the DVB-T transmitter is always detectable by measuring instruments as well the finite quality of the signal processing in the DVB-T modulator also results in the creation of noise like interferers further noise occurs on the transmission link in dependence on the conditions of reception similarly multiple echoes and sinusoidal uh, or impulse like interferers can be expected and echoes in turn can lead to frequency and uh, location selective fading so to calculate the crest factor in CYFDM signals um, the crest factor is usually defined as CFU is equal to 20 log U peak by U RMS the power meters and spectrum analyzers are sometimes also calibrated to the following definition CFP is equal to 10 log PEP by P average where PEP is a peak envelope power U peak by root 2 whole square by Z naught and P average is U RMS square by Z naught the two crest factor defines definition the two crest factor definitions will differ by 3 dB that is CFU is equal to CFP plus 3 dB CFU is greater the crest factor of COFDM signal is calculated as the maximum uh, peak voltage maximum peak voltage is obtained by adding together the peak amplitudes of all single carriers there are so many carriers right n carriers so for each n uh, each carrier what is the peak voltage peak voltage add up everything that's a total peak so u peak is equal to n into u peak naught that is uh, u peak naught is a peak amplitude of a single COFDM carrier and n is the number of COFDM carriers used now the RMS value U peak is calculated right now the U RMS RMS value of the COFDM signal that should be calculated from the quadratic mean that is U uh, RMS equal to N into U RMS naught whole square you have to take a square root of this where U RMS is a RMS voltage of a single COFDM carrier now U RMS naught is U peak naught whole square divided by root 2 peak square by root 2 the RMS value of the COFDM signal is then U RMS equal to square root of n into U peak square divided by 2 okay inserting into this the equation uh, inserting into the equation the maximum peak value occurring when all individual carriers are superimposed and the RMS value of uh, the total signal so the RMS value of the total signal provides CF COFDM okay CFC is 20 log U peak by U RMS so if you substitute it this will in turn can be transformed and simplified to become CF COFDM is equal to now if you simplify that peak naught peak naught square root you, you divide and simplify it you will get n by a, square root of n by 2 again you can convert you will get uh, square root of 2 2n and again if you simplify that it's 10 log 2n so the theoretical crest factors theoretical crest factors in DVB-T are CF DVB-T at 2K 2K mode is equal to 35 dB in 2K mode with 1705 carriers used so simply put N is equal to 1705 you will get that number and uh, for 8K mode you substitute 6817 carriers then you will get 41 dB 
so it must be noted that these are theoretical values which uh, due to the limited resolution of the signal processing and the clipping this cannot occur in practice actually theoretical values will not happen practical values are of the order of magnitude of 13 db 13 db only to about 15 db 13 db for uh, dbt power transmitter and 15 db for with modulators without clipping now see the dbt transmission path itself will be considered now we have to be see that very carefully dbt transmission path in ideal case exactly one signal path arrives at the receiving antenna the signal is then only attenuated to a greater or lesser extent and the signal is merely subjected to awgn that is additive white gaussian noise this channel with the direct view of the transmitter this channel with the direct view of the transmitter is called gaussian channel and this provides the best condition of reception for the receiver which is figure number 17 if multiple echoes are added to this direct signal path look at figure number 18 if multiple echoes are added to the direct signal path the conditions of reception become much more difficult this channel with a direct line of sight and a def defined number of multiple echoes which can be simulated as a mathematical channel model is called Rician channel Rician channel that is figure number 18 okay if then the direct line of sight to the transmitter that is the direct channel path is also blocked the channel is called Raleigh channel look at figure number 19 figure number 19 says it's a Raleigh channel this represents the worst conditions of the stationary reception if for instance the receiver is moving at a certain speed away from the transmitter figure number 20 the receiver is moving at a certain speed away from the transmitter or towards the transmitter a negative or a positive frequency shift that is delta f will occur due to doppler effect this frequency shift by itself does not present any problem to the dvbt receiver which will compensate for it uh, by means of its afc automatic frequency control it can be calculated from the speed of movement the transmitting frequency and the velocity of light with these three it can be calculated therefore now we'll have to see that delta f is equal to v into f by c into cos phi where v is a velocity f is a transmitting frequency c is a velocity of light so it's a 3 right into 10 power 10 10 power 8 right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yeah 10 power 8 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second phi is the angle of incidence of the echo in relation to the direction of the movement so uh, for example at a transmitting frequency of 500 megahertz and a speed of 200 kilometer per hour the doubler shift is 94 hertz now look at figure number 21 if multiple echoes are added the COFDM spectrum becomes smeared this smearing is due to the fact that the mobile receiver is both moving towards the signal paths and moving away from other sources that is there are now spectral COFDM combs which are shifting upwards and downwards due to its subcarrier sampling and subcarrier spacing which are very narrower by a factor of 4 the 8k mode is much more sensitive to the to much smearing in the frequency domain than the 2k mode so the 2k mode is thus the better choice for mobile reception so although dvbt was originally not intended for mobile reception Considering the behavior of the DVBT receiver in the presence of noise, please consider, okay, at that time, more or less noise in the DVBT channel leads to more or fewer bit errors during the reception. The bitter B decoder can correct 
more or fewer of these bit errors depending on the code rate selected in the convolutional encoder. In principle, the same rules apply to DVB-T as do for a simple carrier method DVB-C and DVB-S. That is the same waterfall curves of bit error ratio versus signal to noise ratio that will apply. The only caution is advised with respect to signal to noise ratio which is also often called carrier to noise ratio. These two differ slightly in DVB-T. The reason being the power in the pilot carriers and axillary carriers. So continual and scattered pilots and deep TPS carriers. So to determine the bit error rate in DVB-T, only the power in the actual payload carriers can be used as a signal power. The DVB-T, in the DVB-T, the difference between the overall carrier power and the power in the pure payload, the, over, the difference between the overall carrier power and the power in the pure payload carrier is about uh, 0.857 dB in 2K mode and 0.854 dB in 8K mode. We have calculated no, last time. But the noise bandwidth of the pure payload carrier is reduced with respect to the overall signal. So the reduced noise bandwidth of the payload carriers is uh, 10 log 1512 by 1705 that is minus 0 0.522 dB in 10, 2K mode. 10 log 6048 divided by 6917 that is minus 0 0.520 dB in 8K mode. So the difference between C by N and S by N in DVB-T is C by N minus S by N for uh, 2K mode is 0 0.522 minus or plus 0.857 that is that's a difference right so difference is 0 0.34 db in 2k mode same way the difference between uh, c2n and s2n is 0 0.33 db in 8k mode so look at figure number 22 from the signal to noise ratio from the you know, in uh, figure 22 the bit error ratio before viter b that is the channel bit error ratio can be determined figure number 22 only applies to non hierarchical modulation since the constellation pattern can be expanded with the hierarchical modulation the theoretical minimum carrier to noise ratio for quasi error free operation depend on depend on the code rate both in DVB-T and DVB-S. In addition, the type of modulation that is QPSK, 16QAM, 64QAM and the type of channel Gaussian, Rissian, uh, Rissian and Raleigh that have got an influence. The theoretical minimum uh, C by N uh, are listed uh, you know, here for the case of non-hierarchical coding. Look at the table number 14. Table number 14. So the demands for the minimum C by N fluctuates within a wide range of from about 3 dB for QPSK with a code rate of 1 by 2 in a Gaussian channel up to uh, about 28 dB for 64 QAM with a quad rate of 7 by 8 in Raleigh channel. Practical values are about 18 to 20 dB for 64 QAM code rate of 2 by 3 or 3 by 4 for stationary reception. For mobile reception, it is about 11 to 17 dB, 16 QAM, uh, code rate of 2 by 3 or 3 by 4. So in next uh, uh, session, we will discuss about DVB-T single frequency networks.